Eric Boka, the components of his name also spelled Arai. Eric and Bukar Buka, was the seventh and youngest son of Tolua, a son of Genghis Khan. After the death of his brother the Great Khan Monka, Eric Boka claimed the title of the Great Khan of the Mongol Empire and briefly took power while his brothers Kublai and Hulagu were absent from Mongolia homeland. When Kublai returned for an election in 1260, rival factions could not agree, and elected simultaneous claimants Kublai and Arik Boka to the throne, resulting in the Toluid civil war that fragmented the Mongol Empire. Arik Boka was supported by the traditionalists of the Mongol Empire, while his brother Kublai Khan was supported by the senior princes of North China and Manchuria. Early years Ariq Boka was the youngest son of Sorgatani Beki and Tolua, the youngest son of Genghis Khan. When Genghis died in 1227, the leadership of the empire passed to Genghis' third son, Ogade. He peacefully attended the elections of both his uncle, Great Khan Ogade, and Ogade's successor and eldest son, Gayuk. After his eldest brother Monka was enthroned in 1250, his family became even more powerful among the Qing Isids. Ariq Boka is also known for being sympathetic towards Christianity. This is known from the account of Franciscan William of Rubruck, who was an envoy of Louis IX of France. Succession struggle. Great Khan. When Ogade Khan died, a power struggle erupted, with leadership then passing to Ogade's son Gayuk in 1246. Though Gayuk died only two years later, in 1248. After another struggle, the sons of Tolua, Ogadi's brother, took power. The first of Tolui's sons to be Great Khan was Monka, who proceeded with Kublai to conquer southern China and the southern Song dynasty. Their brother Hulagu led the Mongol advance westward, conquering Baghdad and proceeding into Syria and towards Palestine. During this time, all affairs of the heartland were left under the control of their brother Ariq Boka. When Monka died in 1259, Ariq Boka was elected Khan in the absence of his brothers and had the support of most of the existing ministers and powerful families in the capital of Karakoram, such as Monk's family, and other princes of the Golden Family along with other forces in the capital of Karakoram including Torgud royal bodyguards and White Horde elites, as well as the Oirats, who were allied with him as one of the Oirat leaders was married to his daughter. However, when Kublai and Hulagu received news of Monk's death, they aborted their own battles in order to return to the capital to decide the matter of succession. In May 1260, Kublai was elected Khan by his own supporters, to rival the claim of Ariq Boka. Thus was launched a civil war between the brothers for the leadership of the empire. For example, when the Chagatai Khanate needed a new leader, Kublai attempted to send Abishka, who was loyal to him. But Ariq Boka had Abishka captured and eventually killed, and instead installed his own ally Algu. Ariq Boka ordered Algu to defend the area from both the forces of Hulagu and the possible presence of Burka of the Golden Horde. But Algu deserted Ariq Boka, killing his envoys for treasure, while Kaidu remained loyal to Ariq Boka. Algu and Ariq Boka were soon in direct conflict, with Algu winning the first engagement, but then at the second, Ariq Boka was victorious and forced Algu to flee westward. Surrender eventually, as the war continued between Ariq Boka and his brother Kublai, Ariq Boka's forces weakened. Kublai had powerful Mongol cavalry troops, Alan and Turk contingents and numerous Chinese and Goryeo infantry units. Kublai's supporter Kadan, a son of Ogade, crushed Ariq Boka's force under General Alanda, and Ariq Boka twice lost control of the capital of Karakoram. Kublai also blockaded all trade to Mongolia from North China, in order to cut the food supply. Ariq Boka finally submitted to Kublai in 1263. 
He was imprisoned by Kublai and died mysteriously a few years after his surrender, leading to rumors that he had been secretly poisoned. Legacy According to scholar David Morgan, A.R.I.Q. Boka can be seen as representing an influential school of thought among the Mongols, which Kublai, through his actions and attitudes after 1260 opposed. Some Mongols felt there was a dangerous drift towards softness, typified in those like Kublai who thought there was something to be said for settled civilization and for the Chinese way of life. In the traditionalist view, the Mongol center ought to remain in Mongolia, and the Mongols' nomadic life be preserved uncontaminated. China ought merely to be exploited. A.R.I.Q. Boka came to be regarded as this faction's figurehead. This legacy was continued by Kaidu. Although A.R.I.Q. Boka lost power, some of his descendants later became important figures in the Ilkhanate and the Northern Yuan dynasty. With the lineage of both Ilkhan Upperken and Yesuda can be traced back to A.R.I.Q. Boka. Bibliography Morgan, David. The Mongols. Blackwell Publishing. ISBN 1-4051-3539-5. René Grousset Empire of the Steppes. Rossa B. Morris. Kublai Khan. His Life and Times. Los Angeles. University of California Press. ISBN 9780520067400. Rossa B. Morris. The Reign of Kublai Khan. In Dennis C. Twitchit, John King, Fairbank. The Cambridge History of China. Volume 6, Alien Regimes and Border States, 7101368. Cambridge University Press. pp. 414-489. ISBN 978-0-521-24331-5. Jack Wheatford Genghis Khan and the Making of the Modern World, John Mankublai Khan, H.H. H. Ho of History of the Mongols Part 2.